In the previous video, I've talked about the different kinds of evil and analyzed the work of Jung, Freud and Dante. I have also analyzed the archetypes and I explored the idea of God as the highest value. In the case of the Bourguerie, money was the highest value, but determining who or what a person puts as the highest value is not sufficient to know him fully. There are also other factors to determine, and I will try to explore and define them in this video. As I said in my previous video, general faith in humanity might be the most important thing to be aware of if I want to know the behavior of a person. I will now take the example of a Hollywood actor who advertises his workout plan for insane progress in short time and uh, Tzitz, a skinny guy who decided to go to the gym and, uh, and get uh, fit while admitting uh, to taking uh, steroids. Both of them are two fitness influencers whose physics are both one of the best in the world, but uh, accounting for the steroids they use, uh, Jits was more honest and uh, decided to not sell a workout plan unlike the Hollywood actors who sell a workout plan to make uh, even more money. Uh, so, in this case, uh, Jits helms more trust in, in humanity uh, compared to the Hollywood actors, but the fault is also given by Hollywood, because they, uh, in, they suggest actors to use substance. But uh, the fault also goes to Hollywood, who suggests the actors to use such substances who are dangerous for their health and uh, give the idea to people of uh, a possibility of uh, achieving a perfect physique in a short amount of time. Social platforms such as TikTok, Instagram and YouTube are examples where Fake uh, natural influencers fraud beginners in buying their products and their workout plans. And uh, those who are more, and there are more uh, than them, than there are honest guys. Both these two influencers uh, give away the idea that they have a perfect body on the exterior and uh, possibly that they have controlled every vice. But, um, while the vice of uh, eating uh, junk food is obviously controlled. But uh, for smoking or the other kinds of uh, habits, uh, it doesn't affect much the muscular gains uh, that uh, you can get. As Jean-Paul Sartre and in the 20th century had stated, but, uh, freedom is what you do with what has been progress. done to you. The fact that the you want to learn more about, about this are important in just determining the future behavior of a person. An episode of bullying or of fighting might trigger the shadow instincts of a person of revenge, which is partially a good thing, since the shadow is both positive and negative. But if a person has no one to rely on, no friend, it might bring to suicide, or even worse, if the shadow instincts are fully embraced to an antisocial male, male, resulting in a generalization of all humanity with the ones who bullied him, and takes revenge on the whole humanity as a consequence. As I said in my first video, God's behavior in the Bible depends on the trust humanity provides him with. And as the saying states, the one who isn't welcome to his village will burn it in order to feel its warmth. Another aspect to put into consideration are the vices and the addictions a person refuses to fight or struggles against. The more addiction a person has, the less his pursuit to his creator is, apart from the case where the addictions are the highest value like when a man is addicted to money and puts money as the highest value there is. Sometimes addictions can scare a person badly, like in the case of Nicocado Avocado, 
they can damage a person physically and weaken his mentality. For the moon, addiction I've always experienced is of the same thing. If I am addicted to smoking, if I am addicted to smoking, one cigarette might feel different compared to other ones. But fundamentally, all cigarettes have the same amount of nicotine and produce the same negative effects as any other cigarette. Therefore, addictions contrast the ideals of Christian, Sumerian and Egyptian religion, I have talked about in my first video. The ideas which solicit people to take action and explore the unknown to make it known. Last but not least, as I mentioned before, in the case of some people, their life is built entirely on an addiction. For example, a man might want to finish his work as soon as possible to then go outside and smoke his pack of cigarettes. It is the role of religion to establish whenever an activity is considered as an addiction or not. For Christian religion, Everything a person does in order to become more similar to his best version in terms of health is a good action. A good way of knowing a person is by asking what kind of art he likes. Music, painting, dancing, sports, literature and furthermore what kind of genre he's into. Horror, metal, surrealism, realism, thriller, fantasy and so on. There are many stereotypes following this such that the person who listens to metal tends to be more comfortable around compared to other people. It is a stereotype because the factors depend on the effort of pursuing the genre and the art by the individual. One might listen to Metallica because he feels uncomfortable in society and wants to feel like an anti-conformist. But one can enjoy Metallica because he feels the music is well done. Or another person can like Metallica because of the themes they talk in their songs. Persons have three different values which they redeem as high or as highest. And as a result, in all three of these cases, the person believes that the music is good, since it represents these values. The three opinions are the same, even though the interpretation is different and the three persons have entirely different personalities. To decide completely whether a form of art is aesthetically well done or badly done, one must appeal to Christian religion and its values. See in the least possible, use your talents as well as possible and make the unknown known. As I said in the first part of this video, vices and art are two faces of the same coin, since it comes from noble sources. Even in Carl Jung's archetypes, the shadow is both good and bad, and is the source of art. How does a person distinguish between good and bad when it comes to art? I have mentioned it in the first part, that what is healthy is art and what is unhealthy isn't art is a sin, and uh, being healthy favors one person of survival. But to be 20 years or 30 years, one still doesn't gain many years of life, even if he follows the healthiest lifestyle possible. Living for an infinite amount of time is impossible. Maybe in a few years there will be a technology capable of stopping aging. But it's an immortality which seems like a curse, since a person will eventually follow the same patterns of event. The only way of truly living for a way longer amount of time, centuries or even millennia, is given by Kierkegaard. Kierkegaard believed that humans lived in angst because they have to choose and they know their time is limited, so they always have the doubt whether they choose something right or wrong. The only one who saves himself is the religion's man, who lives trying to look like his best self given by genetics, as much as possible. A person who particularly excels in sports or makes discoveries particularly extraordinary, when he dies he will become a legend. 
and will be followed as an example and this will, will live on for centuries and millennia. Furthermore, the legend will live on in the minds of the people and will also influence the choices of a person who follows him. However, one's life, if emerged in vice, will not be remembered or worse, remembered as a bad example to not follow.